Hi, everybody. Uh, my computer says it's 1230, so I'm going to get started here and just do so by saying hello and thanks so much for joining our 2024 kickoff event. I'm Linus Shukul, Executive Director for John Muir Land Trust. And joining me off screen for now is Melanie Hogan, JMLT's Chief Development Officer, who will join us at the end for a Q&A session. To that end, please use your Q&A function on Zoom to let us know of any questions that you may have. You can do that throughout. We'll collect them and, and go over them at the end. But before then, uh, Melanie's going to turn on temporarily the chat function for you to use. Uh, to that end, please let us know where you're tuning in from today. And also perhaps of uh, one of your favorite JMLT properties to visit. Let me give a minute for that. Open my own chat and see if anybody's chatting in. Okay, thanks for that. Um, let's go ahead and, oh, now I'm seeing some folks chat in. Thank you for that. So I can confirm you're out there. Okay, but with that said, let's get started. I'm going to try and get through a, a good bit of uh, information in a relatively short time. So to do that, I'm going to start by sharing screen. Give me a second with that. Okay, so you should see splash screen. So uh, protecting the places that make the space special. Um, many of you know this, but just to quickly review, bear with me here for one second when I get something more clear on my screen, that we're a local non-governmental 501c3 uh, nonprofit. Uh, many of you know already, but to protect and care for open space is our mission, and specifically ranches, farms, parkland, shoreline in the East Bay. And uh, as you can see on this map, our service area is Contra Costa and Alameda counties. And uh, to that end, we've protected thousands of acres, uh, permanent protection over the last 35 years. We're moving into our 35-year anniversary. Um, the reason that we do that is to ensure clean water and air. Uh, our mission serves these outcomes. Uh, by doing that, we also protect habitat for plants and animals and for all of us, uh, and including for our own public recreation and access for everyone. Uh, it secures local food sources. Um, all of these things work together to uh, protect and improve our mental and physical health and well being. And also, uh, importantly, um, much of our work helps reduce the impacts of climate change, which we hear more and more about. And you'll hear me reference 30 by 30, California's state initiative to preserve uh, or conserve 30% of California's land and coastal waters by 2030 um, as protection against increasing effects of climate change. So uh, why, why do that? Um, all of that is said above but also where we do it is very important. And this information is, is really worth noting at this moment. Um, this, this data comes from the Department of Finance. Uh, we live in Contra Costa Alameda counties, our service area, and we are the hotspot for population growth over the next 30 years. Uh, we're expecting a 23% increase, so someplace between 75 and 100% of those that currently live in San, San Francisco will actually come to occupy over and above already living here, Contra Costa and Alameda counties. Uh, that is a huge growth spurt while much of the rest of the state is in decline. So there's a lot of stress on our ecosystem. We all want housing and transportation and jobs. We also need to protect natural resources to provide for all of those people that are coming over the next 30 years. So uh, to that end, where we do that, um, is Alameda Contra Costa. What you see here is any place you see a yellow pin, we have a real estate interest. We're working on them currently. Um, I'll only highlight 
a couple or three today, just as an example, but you can be assured that in the background, there's a lot going on. But today, uh, just in the interest of time, I'm gonna talk about three different local landscape opportunities. Uh, the first being Franklin Ridge expansion, which you've been hearing about over the last year. It was announced just about a year ago, I think in April will come up on a year of that campaign. It specifically expands uh, via Barnett Ranch and Kenneth Gerlach Preserve. I'll then move to the East Bay Hills and the Pinole Valley Watershed, and specifically Johnson Ranch and Wagner Ranch, some new properties on the horizon. And then uh, to wrap up, the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta properties of Hoover Ranch and Bradford Island. So let's get started with uh, Franklin Ridge and the campaign to expand Franklin Ridge, which you've, I know, heard a lot about over the last year. So Franklin Ridge is approximately 10,000 acres writ large. And this is essentially uh, a 35 year effort. And we think, you know, ultimately a capstone achievement as we're in our 35 year anniversary to permanently protect an unobstructed ridgeline corridor across Franklin Ridge. Started with Mount Wanda and now we're all the way out to Barnett. It's approximately $6.5 million to achieve those outcomes. It'll connect trails that span more than 18,000 acres. It, it already does and will provide public recreation very close to home. Um, and furthermore, permanently protects rich habitat for really numerous endangered endangered and threatened species. This is, this is vital critical corridor habitat for large mammals down to uh, you know, just the, the smallest of flora and fauna. So it's the whole range of species. And again, it supports that 30 by 30 initiative to conserve 30% of our land and coastal waters by 2030. Uh, the Kenneth Gerlach Preserve in Barnett Ranch will create that capstone achievement. I wanna point out where those are. Here's the Gerlach property right there. And then uh, the Barnett property, you can see what we're trying to do coming from Mount Wanda to connect that corridor all the way out that will give us access to the south meadow of Fernandez Ranch, all the way out to uh, the intermodal transport in Hercules, connecting up the Bay Area Ridge Trail, part of the 550 mile Bay Area Ridge Trail that circumvents the, uh, the entire region, as well as moving across these properties out to Cummings Skyway and connecting to Crockett Hills. This is sort of the holy grail of getting across uh, a highway that otherwise is unavailable to bikers, equestrians, walkers, whoever it might be. This will effectively create that connection. So very important um, acquisitions to piece in all of those missing pieces. And I also mentioned that we have um, a donation of the back nine of the Franklin Canyon Golf Course. That will also give us access to Fernandez right off of Highway 4. So this is really uh, a lot of things coming together, again, over a 35-year effort. Uh, we're very excited about the possibility. Uh, please uh, stay with us and, and contribute and support this as you can, um, including a stretch gift as we come into our June uh, close and uh, outcome of those. And here's a diagram that better shows uh, how those trails are meant, these are not exact trail alignments, are meant to achieve those connections. So again, looking forward to seeing that happen. To that end, this is what you'll experience when you're up there. Some of you have seen these beauty shots, but they are extraordinary. We live in a very beautiful part of the world. You can see views off to the north, north, west. Now looking back more to the east, that's out to shoreline, a uh, fog-covered bay. <coughs> Pardon me. And when you're up on Pinole Peak, of course, you see the South Bay and Mount Tam there and more water views there. Just gorgeous property. Um, hope you'll get out and see it and enjoy these views for yourself, especially on a day like today. It's very similar weather as what you're seeing in these images. And at night, uh, we recently captured some beautiful photos of large mammals. This, uh, Puma, a beautiful, huge cat that's up on the ridge and um, very excited to see these large mammals roam 
And of course, there's so many other species as well. You see American badger here, California red-legged frog, burrowing owl, and a bobcat, home to them all. Moving forward, let's, let's swing a little bit south to the East Bay Hills. Um, and to that end, it's, it's important to note in this photo, Volmer Peak. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the Panola Valley watershed here, as well as this ridgeline. Of course, here you see Briones Reservoir, San Pablo Reservoir, and Volmer Peak, I'm gonna be talking about Johnson Ranch, is on the back side of this slope. So keep that in mind as we advance. And as we advance, think about it from this perspective as well. Here's Volmer Peak. This is a hike out from Harvey Ranch, recently permanently protected out to Carr Ranch with our, with our great partners at Ebb Mud. Being able to look back at Volmer Peak, you can see how this connected. And also I posit that this is Pinole Ridge all the way out to where we were along the Franklin Ridge area as well. So you can see there's this big basin and this connectivity between all these properties hitched together as it were to paraphrase Muir. Here's where Johnson Ranch tucks in to what is watershed, Ebb Mud here, as well as Tilden Regional Park here. And back here, you see the Pinole Valley watershed up against Fernandez and all the properties that were being pieced together out to Mount Wanda and so forth. This is also part of the Pinole watershed. So we're connecting by watershed as well as view shed and all sorts of north, south, east, west uh, wildlife corridor. Let's get a little bit closer. You can see how this tucks in. Very important property, um, very subject to development, but really complements some very important partner uh, criteria, including watershed here, public access here, protecting uh, developed areas here with respect to fire abatement and the like. And this is a very accessible property, um, and it's a complex property to attain. Uh, the family, the Johnson family, have incorporated this many years ago. Um, it's a C corporation. We're uniquely as a land trust positioned to undertake a merger and acquisition to be able to uh, attain this property. You can see that it's also relational to Wagner Ranch down here, which we hope for an appropriation from the California legislature to permanently protect this nature area for kids from out throughout the region to be able to enjoy and also to connect up potentially actually by trail all the way up to Tilden Park and the like. And remember, keep your eye on the seam train there and there's Volmer Peak there, pardon me for that pop up. Here's some trail designation or alignment. You can see again, there's Volmer in here. Um, this is the steam train area here and down here is uh, Wagner Ranch. All of these red lines and dotted lines would be um, trails to be attained, including potentially out into the watershed. And you can see here, Pinole Valley watershed going into this big sink here, and also coming from the other direction vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Fernandez Ranch and the Franklin Ridge. So you can see how this complements Tilden Regional Park as well as Ebb Mud Properties. And, but for the land trust stepping in, this is really a otherwise very difficult property to uh, preserve. So one last look at that close in. You see how it tucks in and how important it, the connection is to uh, what's right on the edge of, of East Bay Hills to Alameda County, as well as Gotch Costa into the Arenda Hills as well. So to keep moving so that we have Time for Q&A at the end, um, a brief exposition of Hoover Ranch. Uh, this is a 600 acre property that is also combined with uh, a 335 acre property at Bradford Island. So we're looking at about a thousand acres or 950 thereabouts um, in the Sacramento Delta. It's uh, this undertaking really is one of the most significant conservation projects in Northern California, again, to support uh, California's 30 by 30 initiative um, and coastal water protection along with landmass 
uh, as protection against uh, climate change. The Delta is uniquely positioned to be able to do that. Um, these properties out in this larger Delta area, and you can see it in relationship to Pacheco Marsh, Family Harvest Farm, and over here, Franklin Ridge, the beginning of that. If I zoom in, here are the well, not so much a zoom as an outline. Here's Hoover Ranch and Bradford Island parcels. Um, these properties in the Delta help protect uh, uh, an ecosystem that supports more than 750 plant and animal species. Um, as you can see from the canals, and if I were to zoom out, you'd see all of these run south. It's uh, part of the state's largest watershed. Uh, which uh, 25 million Californians rely on for fresh drinking water. So protecting that watershed in the Delta here is critically important. Again, as I said before, I believe it's among the largest privately owned properties in Contra Costa. Um, and our project will undertake both acquisition as well as restoration of those properties. Um, to do that, it's approximately $25 million to achieve. We'll announce this project in the fall. I think some of you have seen some communications about it, but we will uh, really get after it in the fall as well as uh, Johnson Ranch. Um, part of what we'll do when we get into this project will be to raise the water surface levels that will um, essentially inundate what had been uh, dewatered for, for agriculture and the peat soils that give off a great deal of carbon then is sequestered underwater. The, this is with the Hoover Ranch properties behind a, a levee that's in very good shape. It's about two miles of shoreline here. Um, there are siphon valves on that levee. By inundating and reestablishing uh, that immersion, we'll sequester up to 20 tons of carbon per acre per year. It's literally a chimney when you're out there. So doing this kind of conservation in the Delta is uh, some of the best conservation initiatives that uh, the land, land trust can undertake. We're very excited for the opportunity. The family's been great to work with. And when you're out there, it's just so beautiful. Um, to be able to, to make this happen um, is, is a privilege and an important responsibility. Uh, we can only do it all together. So we hope you'll join us in that, in that uh, effort. Uh, when we are out there, um, ornithologists have reported or described these properties as producing some of the best birding days of their careers, uh, which you see here is what an American Avocet. Here's some of the uh, just uh, existing uh, water elements on property. Much of this will just be enhanced. The killdeer, it's just, it's exquisite uh, habitat with so many different species uh, in residence and it's part of the flyway, there's some Canadian geese taking off. Um, you see them in flight. It's the north face of Mount Diablo. <coughs> so we really do hope you'll invite us and join these lands campaigns. It's a short, brief overview um, of just three projects. There's many more, but these are big and important efforts that are coming up in the fall. And um, the ways you can help is, you know, come see them. Uh, come schedule a tour, see the new properties, uh, bring along friends. You can invite others to join the, the important work, but also come out and see it together. And again, um, uh, you know, we do encourage you to make a meaningful financial investment. These are once in a lifetime opportunities, as we talked about at the beginning. Some of the... Uh, the population pressures that are advancing on our county, and it's a great place to be. It's a great place to live. We want to be able to afford that for anyone and all that might be interested in being part of our community. This is part of how we're able to allow that to happen is by preserving these natural resources. So please do think about it. And uh, together, we can achieve this sort of abundant biodiverse future for nature and all of us together, including those that are still yet to arrive. <laughs> Pardon me. With that said, I'd invite questions and perhaps uh, Melody can rejoin. Sure. Hey, Linus. Hey. All right. So if people want to use the, the Q&A uh, function, 
in uh, in Zoom, you can go ahead and start asking away. I'll be moderating this section of the uh, of the presentation, um, and we'll just give you a minute or so to to type in some questions. Oh, actually, I, I see it's, there's one already here, Linus, an anonymous question. Uh, will there be hikes on Franklin Ridge for the public? Absolutely. You can go there now, uh, but we're also going to be hosting uh, 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 several hikes in the spring, which is just right around the corner here, uh, to which you're invited. Um, there'll be docent led. There's uh, There'll be hikes having to do with wildflowers. Um, we're doing them multilingual. Um, we're we're just very excited to host you and any and all that would be interested in joining us out on that beautiful Ridgeline property. Yeah, and I can also chime in to say that um, if you go to our calendar on our website, there's already a few hikes um, on Franklin Ridge already there that you can sign up for in March. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question from Dennis Carl: uh, Is the Hoover property still in Contra Costa County or Solano County? The Hoover property is fully in Contra Costa County, as is Bradford Island. So yeah, our service area is Contra Costa and Alameda. So we're not we're not over into Solano. We occasionally have invitations and and work collaboratively with other land trusts that uh, you know would would uh, allow for that service area. But no, Hoover is. The you know, simple answer is Hoover is entirely in Contra Costa County. Great. Okay, Bob Feldman asks, how can I set up a tour? Um, email myself or Melanie. Um, you can even email to info at JMLT, but either of our first names, Linus or Melanie at jmlt.org, just express interest and we'll make sure to, to connect you to a tour. We'd love to sponsor you to be out there, any and all of these properties. Yes. Uh, David Bartke asks, when will Pacheco Marsh be open for public access? Uh, we are scheduled to, actually bridges are being manufactured right now. We ended up with uh, 150 foot bridges made out of aluminum because of some of the, uh, the uh, as built and what we had to ultimately engineer being built on, you know, sort of bay mud and so forth. So we're, at, we're manufacturing right now. Our, our uh, construction season will go from August through essentially end of year. So we expect the property will be open to the public uh, likely at the end of 2024 or just into early spring 2025. But it will be a construction zone hard hat uh, this fall. Great. Um, John Robinson asks, how close are you to the goal for the expansion of Fernandez Ranch, which I, I think he um, probably means Franklin Ridge. Right. Um, and, what is the next and, goal after that? Right. Uh, I think um, I th that is, you know, it's interesting because they all do connect. So when you say Fernandez Ranch, Franklin Ridge, that the whole the whole concept is to connect. I think we're, I, I turn to Melody to ask, you know, sort of where we are with the numbers we're heading towards a 6.5. I think we're doing pretty well. Yeah, in terms of the numbers, we're, uh, the goal is 6.5. Currently, we're at 5.5. So we have another a million dollars to raise by June 30th. Um, I do believe that his question is more about, are we trying to expand more than just what we have currently, um, the additional 234 acres of Barnett and Gerlach? Is there more property on Franklin Ridge that we're um, trying to acquire? There are additional properties, but these properties are as a straight line corridor effectively complete that that wildlife uh, sustainability in the corridor. So there are ancillary properties that we'd be interested in, but these are critical to make that connection. Yeah. Okay. Um, Elizabeth Hudson asks, what are the properties you'll be prioritizing in the next couple of years? Well, as you saw, there's a lot of yellow pins on that on that original aerial map. But I think the reason I'm leading with Hoover Ranch and uh, the Johnson Ranch is those are by of necessity um, immediate priorities in the coming year or two. Um, there's also a number of really important properties down in the Moraga Hills area that, uh, again, with limited time, I'd only highlight 
uh, what I did today, but um, the ones you'll see most emphasized in communications just around the corner will be what, what you saw today. And there's, there's more to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christine Howard asks, are you able to obtain funds from the state for any of, for any of these properties? Yes. Um, that's part of the, um, the urgency that you hear is that uh, the state was, uh, had, had, um, appropriated or encumbered $2 billion towards 30 by 30. And we wanted to put as many projects in the hopper as possible and before state agencies in order to uh, uh, access those funds. And we've done we've done pretty well and in including coming up with Hoover Ranch to see, uh, you know, goodly sums of, of financing come from specifically Wildlife Conservation Board and the Coastal Conservancy. So we've already attained some and expect to be approved to attain more over the next uh, year or two. And by 2026, though, I would say that 30 by 30 and those funds will basically wind down. So we want to get as much in the door as possible right now so that we can leverage it. Okay, Dennis Carl asks, Again, any plan to restore the connectivity on Feeders Trail Number One from Dutra to Pereira Road, and the East Bay Mud Trail ahead to Sobrante? So, um, our plan is always to connect with the the Feeder Trail Number One, one of the oldest trails, as it were, or road in Contra Costa County. Um, the Feeder Trail was conveyed from the county to the East Bay Regional Park District. So it, it's theirs to restore and maintain. Uh, we certainly benefit from properties having uh, connectivity to it, but there's only so much we can do to actually uh, steward those, the, you know, steward that, that road. We do as much as we can, but the plans really are uh, with the park district. And of course they have a very long list of, of uh, responsibilities. So we, we occasionally ping them with photos and so forth saying, you know, this might be something put on your list. And of course, we do want to see them make that uh, final connection from what is it, Ferndale out to Pereira Road to really connect over to uh, the Pinole Valley watershed property on the backside of Fernandez as well. And all the way out to El Sobrante. That's that is the another wonderful trail connection. But of course, we do have the very rich trail coming over from Fernandez down into the uh, Pinole Valley watershed and, and potentially out to El Sobrante that way as well, Kennedy Grove. Okay, so I think we have time for one more question. Um, Jane Mackey asks, can you please say a little more about the challenges of acquiring Johnson Ranch? Uh, she lost contact for a few minutes, so, so um, no need to repeat if you've already said it, but she was curious about uh, challenges acquiring Johnson Ranch. Yeah, the challenges are are sort of unique. We've we've done this once before, and um, we rely on a lot of a lot of good friends, including a good friend of mine, Rob Townsend and uh, Morrison Forster, and so forth, to work with what is a C corporation with thirty shareholders. After many years of conversation and ultimately alignment of those shareholders as as beneficiaries of the original owner, they're all related to that family, uh, be able to uh, acquire the property with a merger and acquisition strategy. It's not simply a purchase agreement. So that is a, a complexity that has to be undertaken. Uh, we'll go through all of the steps that are involved with an M&A, but that's, that's part of the complexity. The other complexity is obviously raising funds and then working with our partners at EBRPD and and especially at MUD, who you know both have been wonderful, um, to sort of demonstrate the the mutual benefits of that property and hopefully have uh, both of those agencies participate in support for its acquisition along with the general public or our membership. So it's it's a wonderful property. The view shed is incredible. The connectivity with trails, the fire abatement potential. Uh, but it is complex, and um, you'll hear much more about it as we go forward. Right. Okay. I th I think we're at time. I want to thank yeah. everybody for joining us, and thank you, Linus, for the great presentation. Um, we've got through all the questions, so um, I think we can yeah. say goodbye. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon, and thanks for joining us. We really do appreciate it. We'll look forward to seeing you out on the trail. 
Yeah, and thank you for your support. Yeah. Bye. Thanks again. Bye-bye.